Super Talk Mississippi Media Production. You're listening to Thunder and Lightning on Super Talk Mississippi. Covering Mississippi State sports like nobody else. With Sports Talk Mississippi's Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk of On3 Sports. Now get ready for Thunder and Lightning. This is Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk here with you on a Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us here at supertalk.fm or wherever it is that you get podcasts from. We appreciate you guys out there, our great listeners, especially our servicemen and women out there taking care of us. I want to thank our sponsors over at the over at the over at Strange Brew Coffee House and Churn and Spoon Ice Cream. Start your day the right way with a trip to the drive thru over at Strange Brew Coffee House here in Starkville or at Brupolo over in Tupelo. It'd be a little weird, Robbie, if Brupolo was in Leslie. It would be a little weird. It's a pretty sounding little town. Yeah, I'm sure it's great. Uh, where community. We- we're not town. Uh, let's see what it, let's see what it's officially listed as. There we go. And can I get it here? Can we do that? No. I want, now, now you got me curious. I need to know. It's a it's a free state. I don't think it's that. Well, I don't think it's that. Hold on. Uh it's a neighborhood. It's a neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's a subdivision. Yeah. It's not even a. It's not even a community. I mean, it's, it's on the map. That's all I'm gonna say. It's between uh, Woodville and Fort Adams. Okay. So down in South Mississippi. South Mississippi. Yeah. I know where Woodville is. There you go. That's where uh, Southwest is, isn't it? Uh, oh, there's that in S- Summit. Isn't and that Summit? Summit? But that's like that's not that that's. That's around like Macomb area. Oh yeah, it's, it's in Wilkinson County. Yeah, yeah, Southwest is in Summit. Yeah. What's in Woodville? Um, you know what I'm thinking of? I think I'm thinking of Woodville up here. There's a Woodville up in North Mississippi too. That's where Wood Junior College is. No, Wood Junior College is in Matheson. Is it where I live? Yeah. Well, then where is Woodville? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You know what? You know what? We're not we're not going to go down this road. It's gonna, it's going to lead us to astray. I can tell. Well, no, I'm trying to figure out what you might be thinking of. You're probably thinking of Wood Junior College. I am thinking of Wood Wood Junior College. Yeah. Woodville, Mississippi is in Wilkinson County. Is there a second one? No, apparently not. I don't know, man. I don't know. Wherever you are no, in our great state, you can enjoy Strange Brew Coffee each and every morning. It's just a click away. It's Strange What's Brew Coffee. What's talking about, Lee Battelle? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Lee Battelle will, will get us he'll, he'll let us know. He'll let us know. Oh, excuse me. College Corner, collegecornerstore.com is the place to find the maroon and white merchandise that you are looking for. And you certainly are looking for it. You guys are looking for the new polos. You're looking for new t-shirts. You're looking for new hats. You want the new logos. You get them at College Corner. Two locations to serve you in the Jackson area. Original by Fleet Feet, Flow by the Half Shell. Or you can shop online, collegecornerstore.com. Restaurant Tyler, a Starville's flagship restaurant for lunch, dinner, or Sunday brunch. The best meal in town's always at Restaurant Tyler. If you're going to be in Starville anytime soon, a trip to Restaurant Tyler needs to be on your to-do list. Whenever I have friends and family in from out of town, I'm always taking them to Restaurant Tyler. I always try to make a, a point to go there for at least one meal whenever I have anybody in town. You should be the same way because it's the best place to eat in the city. When you want a great meal, when you want to have an experience that you'll never forget, you always can do it at Restaurant Tyler. Priority One Bank, 16 locations to serve you throughout central Mississippi. Let PriorityOneBank.com be your guide. Let them show you not only where those locations are, show you who's nearby, but show you how they're going to help you manage your money, show you how they're going to help you invest, how they're going to help you prepare for the future. Now more than ever, it's important to be able to talk to your banker when you have a question about your money. You don't want to be on hold. You don't have to wait. Priority One Bank gives you that opportunity. Let Priority One Bank make you their priority. Tuesday show means that, uh, yeah, we're going to have a uh, talk about Jeff Levy's press conference. We're going to see a sign. We are going to do that in just a little bit. I already know what it is. Um, we'll get your thoughts on it. One thing i got to say about Jeff Levy press conferences, we've had, this is our, uh, our fifth one, right? Is that correct? This is week five. Yeah. I don't think we've combined for an hour yet. I don't think all five press conferences combined have been one hour long. Today was like eight minutes. You know, we, we do it every week. I think uh, this is becoming a, a new tradition here. So I tweet, 
Uh, Lebby is here. Ask first about the quarterback. You had the first question today. 11.43 a.m. Uh, that's it for Lebby. 11.54 a.m. 11 minutes. Wow. So we've done five press conferences, and I don't think we've done 60 minutes with, with him yet. It, it's it's pretty impressive. But again, we're getting all of our questions in. There's there's It's not like they're cutting it or anything. It's just the, the answers are fairly... They're not really like short answers. I, I can't even explain how it's happening because that when I'm typing out the he's giving full answer. Paul's typing out the trend. I mean, it's full answer. I mean, like, I guess the tempo of his offense isn't the only thing that's fast. Yeah, it's I mean, crazy. The man can it, talk. It really he is insane. Um, obviously, the focus of today's press conference. And then, like I said, you mentioned you. I mentioned you had the first question. You asked about Michael Van Buren or the, the quarterback situation. Looks like both guys are going to play this weekend, but Michael Van Puren's going out there first, and my guess is that he'll play the majority of this game. That I feel like he's saying both guys are going to play. It's because he believes. I think he's, that's his way of saying it's going to be a bad game, ugly, so I'll probably have a chance to play them both. But I think Michael Van Buren is this team's starting quarterback as of now. That's what it feels like. And a lot of people have said, well, what, you know, what's happened to Chris Parson? I just I feel like – Lebby believes that Michael Van Buren is better suited to run this offense. Skill set wise, mm-hmm. my, like from the start, Van Buren has been Lebby's guy. He recruited him at Oklahoma to run his offense. He had a great relationship with him. This was his guy. He made a change in Mississippi State's um, commitment list to go get Michael Van Buren. So he's been extremely high on him. I think the plan was certainly to redshirt him. He played against Eastern Kentucky, did not play against Toledo. I mean, nobody else played against Toledo, so there wasn't an opportunity for him to. But I think the goal was to redshirt him this year and, you know, hopefully bring him along. This is kind of, I think, now that you have Jeff Levy as head coach, this is what you thought was going to happen with Chris Parson last year. Mm -hmm. Throw him in the fire. He gets a little bit of that taste. It's it's hopefully good for him moving forward. I think what we're doing now is we're saying Michael Van Buren's probably going to win out out of the two uh, younger quarterbacks. And writing on the wall, it, not really, just because of this is Jeff Webby's guy. I, mm-hmm. I felt like at some point there was a means to an end probably for Chris Parson. And I'm not throwing in the towel on Chris Parson, but if things work out for Michael Van Buren, I think it's logical to believe that there's probably going to be a decision at some point for Chris Parson mm-hmm. on whether or not he wants to stick it out here. Agreed, agreed. So uh, the, the entire time, my belief has been Van Buren's probably going to win out in the long run at quarterback there. I just didn't expect it to be now, and you don't need it to be now, but... We'll see if he's able to ha- handle the situation. What a heck of a first start! I mean, you got to go. Chris Parson had to go to to Aggie Land, and yeah. that's a completely different animal. Yeah, you're, you're playing the number one team in the country now. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. I, I imagine Texas is going to peel their ears back and come after him and try to hit him and and uh, disrupt him in this game and try to make him make a lot of mistakes. Could be one of the most aggressive defensive game plans we'll ever see. Because yeah. I, I, you have to think Texas is thinking exactly what you just said, that we're going to get this true freshman, his first ever start on the road against us. We should show him as much pressure as we can. And, you know, the and what you have to do is you have to make it really easy on him. You have to get the ball out quickly. Yeah. You're going to have to – you know, run some screens, some you know, short slant patterns, some things that are, that just allow you to get the ball out of his hands quickly and not make him stay in the pocket for a right. while and get popped. And you're gonna have to be able to run the football. I mean, you, I, he can't survive in this game without there being a semblance of a running game Correct. to help him out. Correct. And so, that's the situation for Mississippi State coming into this weekend. The playing, you know, they were already going to be a massive. Underdog. They were a 36 point underdog as of today. I, I checked. I, the, the website I like to look at is Bovada. It's just it's just a website with a. It's an it's right. online casino. They have like, the line was down as of today. And I don't mean down as in it's gone down. I mean it's it's not available to bet. Yeah. 
right now. So I think that's because they have some questions about the quarterback situation. That that line will probably go back up, and it might continue so, to rise. It could be. A I mean, the line because that line came out. Well, it probably didn't come out before they found out about Shapen. No, no, it didn't. It didn't. But I, I, that, as of this morning, but they didn't know who the quarter starter was going to be. Right. So I yeah. think they, they were holding out to see what was going to happen there. I I can't imagine that Parson was worth any points or anything, but. My guess is this line will probably, by the time we get to kick off, be in the 40s. And yeah. even then, I would not think State have a chance to, to cover this line, to be totally honest with you. Um, it's going to have to be a situation where they just let off the gas completely. And, and State can just get a couple of late scores. But yeah. even then, it seems unlikely. Have we checked on our friend, uh, South Texas Dog? This have week? not. Have not. As he far is as going I know, to be in still, hell this week. As far as I know, he's still, he's still holding to the faith. Uh, remember when we did those uh, best case scenarios and he got on to us for saying yeah, would, would the best s- case was that State would go over there and be really competitive and lose a close one? Would lose by two touchdowns? Who, who would, would, would you sign, sign up, up for that? that? Would, I'd would you sign, sign up the for dotted that? line in blood for that one right now? We were, um, we were, we were slandering this defense. Slandering, yeah. We were, we were way too, we were too nice kind. to this defense. Too kind. Um, also, we learned today that Kevon Lee – Going to be out for some time, and that's that's a shame. He was he played really well against Florida, had some good moments. There. I didn't even. Did you see when he got hurt? No, no, I didn't really. I mean, I saw where Shapen got hurt, but Shapen got right back up, and I thought maybe he'd be okay. And just just tough, you know. State down to you know really just Daniels and, and Booth now. I can't imagine Xavier Gaten is going to. He was out last he week. He was anyway. hurt last week. But you you have to pull the shirt off of him now. Yeah, you don't have any choice. You, you have to Game get a third back. Backs. Yeah. 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 And honestly, he might be the he's probably the most dynamic back you have right now. So I mean, get him some playing time and next year he's competing this for This is this is a total Murphy's Law situation here. Everything yeah. that can possibly go wrong for state has at this point. And at some point it has to come back up, right? I mean, yeah, but it doesn't have to be this year. but it's not not this year. But you're wondering when when is that going to be? Maybe next year? Maybe. It, it can't happen this year. No, it's not so, possible. So is it just that, you know, it just gets better in basketball? I don't know. Well, I mean, there is football that. just doesn't get a just doesn't get doesn't a get better. Yeah, uh, there is that. There is one. Other, there was one other question that stood out to me today, and that's what the sign's going to be today. We're talking about we're going to talk about uh, Don Terry Russell. The sign is brought. I saw the sign is brought to you by our friends over at Pip Printing and Signs, who want you to see the sign. And the sign is that your business will benefit from a great relationship with Pip Printing and Signs. Thirty years of experience helping businesses get their message out. Just like you're, you, you want to do. You want to have the the best possible marketing materials. You want to have signage that grabs customers' attention and gets them in the front door and keeps them coming back. You do that with a trip, a talk with our friend Cam Baker at Pip Printing and Signs. Call Cam today. Tell him you heard about him on Thunder and Lightning. 601-499-5216. And you too can see the sign that you're going to need to do business with Pip Printing and Signs. When you need printing, call Pip Pip today. Paul Jones asked about Don Terry Russell in this press conference. And the answer from Levy was that he he talked about trusting the guys that are on the field. Then he mentioned three players that weren't Don Terry Russell and said that's who we're going to go with. So I'm going to just go ahead and put Don Terry Russell in the transfer portal, I guess. Yeah, and it's what a weird way to answer. He didn't answer well, the question about he didn't say anything about Don Terry Russell. And I'm guessing he's not off the team because yeah. he's reported when guys have left the team. Right. So, what a weird situation. <laughs> he the other day he was like tweeting cryptic stuff, and I think he tweeted something cryptic back in camp. It's obvious he's kind of in the doghouse at mm-hmm. this point. I just don't know what his status is. It, was he even dressed the other day? Was he no, dressed? I, I mean, I'm sure wear, he was dressed wearing yeah. something, but was he wearing a jersey He's and naked. shoulder pads? Or this is one of those things that you know, coaches they put so much emphasis on practice, and you should. You do. You should need to practice hard, right? But there are some guys who just make plays during the game. Don Terry Russell, in his limited action, has been one of those guys. Yeah, and so. It's it's tough that he's you know he has to watch from the sidelines while other guys aren't getting the job done and he's not getting that opportunity. But at the same time, if he's doing things in practice, and we don't know the answer to that, we don't know. We just have to go off. But it's just I thought it was really odd that he was asked about a certain player. He mentions three other players, by, not by name but by nickname. Like, who who's K Binge? 
Is that is that Bingley Jones? Bingley Jones. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't even hear what he said. Is that what he said? He K said binge. K binge. T Coop. Oh, let's uh, Ty, Ty Cooper. Ty Cooper and Wait, JP. K- so Bingley Jones, they is don't it, play the same position. Neither does JP Purvis, does he? They don't I, I, I don't know. I don't know what he was talking about there. <sighs> that one, that one, that one felt like I said. Let's that's why. It. That's why I made this one the sign because I don't know what he's talking about there. I don't, and I, you know, it, I think what it was was just to take away from Don Terry and mm-hmm. kind of put it more on, like, kind of take the heat off of him a little bit. Yeah, and put it more on. Yeah, we're just kind of tightening up our rotation a little bit. We're yeah. not. But it's obviously something wrong because he's one of the few guys that can get pressure off the edge. Mm-hmm. There's like three or four guys. I saw Joe, Joe Head playing a little more the other day, which is good. I'd like to see more more of him, Zachary Tillman, and, and guys like that on defense. But that was such a weird deal all the way around. Like I, I kind of was just expecting him to come out and say he's no longer with the team. Mm-hmm. because we, I, I thought that's where he was going, yeah. You know, we have to ask these questions. We knew the other day that, Leon Bell was no longer on the team, but you have to ask it to get some finality to it. We got no finality. We don't know if he's still on the team. Is he suspended? Is he hurt? Mm-hmm. Don't know. But all we were told was basically they're they're kind of focusing in on the other guys. So just an odd answer to an odd question. Uh, this yeah. was it felt like kind of. His most coach speaky yeah. press conference. Well, and and this is the thing. I think he's trying to kind of. What's he going to say? Yeah, and what and, are we going to ask? Well, and here's here's the deal too. This is a guy that is trying to build his culture and kind of keep the team together and yeah. stuff. You can't come out and start throwing people under the bus, talking yeah. about all the negatives. And I I get people want to hear him just come out and shoot people straight, but there is a little bit of a you know, posturing that has to take place by head coach in this situation. And Mike Leach was the opposite. Mike Leach came out and said, we got a lot of malcontents and we're not, you know, this team's going to look a lot different. And that's just not Jeff Lebby's style. And I think it's important, too, for Mississippi State to kind of keep the troops together a little bit because you're get, the transfer portal is going to um, be good and bad for Mississippi State. You kind of want to – keep as much good graces as you possibly can to build on something for next year because you don't need the entire roster to implode. Right. And, you, and you need the players, too, to stay together so you can kind of build on something. So, I, you know, a lot of people upset about the, you know, kind of the coach-speak nature of this, but yeah. I, I just don't know what else he can kind of say at this point. Right. It's just – it is what it is. Like, that's – Here's the thing. It's just the nature of where it is. You know that I'm correct on this, that no matter what a coach says after a loss, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because you're just going to be mad. He could literally get up there and go, you know what, I am the worst head coach in college football. Um, I'm also a terrible human being. Uh, I'm a crappy cook. Uh, I keep a dirty house. Um, I kick dogs. He could say all these things, and it would just be people would just still be mad. They'd be like, well, why don't you just, why don't you just die, you know, or something like that. <laughs> Or he could get up there and be like, you know, he could go up there and, and, and tell a story of how he's like, he, he came to the Lord this week and, and got baptized. And like, well, who has time for that? You should be coaching. All you care about is the Lord. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what a coach says after a loss. Conversely, it doesn't also matter what they say after a win. After a win, if State had won, if State was 4 0, <laughs> Lebby could have got up there and told you everything I just said the first time. I'm a terrible husband, an awful father. I kick animals. I, I like to litter. Uh, I've been known to, uh, you know, you know, flash people on, on the highway. It doesn't matter. You're four and zero. Hey, it's the greatest coach in America. Yeah, I remember Joe Moorhead kind of played both sides. Remember yeah. how he came out at first and was like, "This is unacceptable. I'm going to get fixed." We're like, "Okay," like he was calling out some stuff. Yeah, and then he got to like. Well, you know, Nick Saban, whenever he had played his yeah. first year at Alabama. Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter. Let's, just let the Does man get not. up there, give give us his coach speaky answers, and we'll all move on with our lives. I didn't show up today expecting to learn all of the answers. And it's like, you know, the we can't do the whole, like, ask the tough questions thing. I I, I don't care about that right now. I haven't seen that yet. I, I think people I just coming, I think people just understand like at this point like what are you gonna do? Yeah, what is the tough question at this point? Coach, y'all suck, why? 
All I want to know right now is what's going on with the injured players? Who's going to start at quarterback? Like, yeah. at, let's just get the personnel. So we just thoughts. get it out of the way. Guys, this is like, you know, you guys have jobs. You know, yeah, sometimes you have like a meeting at your job. You're like, hey, we're going to have a meeting today about this. And it doesn't affect you, and it doesn't really matter what is said at this meeting, but you have to go to the meeting because it's part of your job. Yep. This is what this is for us. I'm not going to learn anything at these press conferences. I'm not going to get anything that's worthwhile, but I have to go. Have to go and and, and we did when we learned something today that <coughs> Michael Van Buren is starting on mm-hmm. on Saturday. It appears that they will try to use both quarterbacks, and we learned that Kevon Lee was out. Yeah. And other than that, I don't know what else we really exactly could draw from the press conference, and I don't know what we were supposed to. I didn't go into the press conference thinking he's going to unleash on Coleman Hutzler today. Yeah. And you know, there Coleman are Hustle's some fans who think that's going to happen. They think that Levy's going to walk in and be like, "Well, first thing I want to tell everyone is that I've demoted or fired Coleman Hutzler. Not going to happen. Just not acceptable. We're just going to. He's not going. And, and Levy's not stepping down from his position four games into the season, right? So also, not playing Josh Hubbard. I, I don't know where that came from, but that was great. It's great. All right. Let's move into our SEC picks. That's brought to you by our friends over at the Mississippi Beef Council, who want to remind you that beef, it is what's for dinner. I, I did good this weekend. Our, our buddy uh, Sam, was mm-hmm. uh, he was in my hometown of Vicksburg, and he was like, where can I go eat a steak? And I told him, told him to go to the Beechwood. Beechwood, baby. And uh, he, I texted him. I was like, hey, how was it? He's like, I was great. So oh, yeah. I told the Mississippi Beef Council man where to go get a steak. I feel pretty good about that. Again, his beef. It's good. Yep. It is good. Beef is good, and I suggest Sam is beefy. Yeah, I suggest that you I'm eat. Saying. Yeah, he's he's a big beefy man. He's beefy. There you go. So big meaty men slapping meat. All right, let's calm down over there. Anyway, <laughs> hope you guys can enjoy a steak this week. I think I'm, we're yeah we're cooking out this weekend. We're going we're going to put those big dinosaur steaks. Not on. going to the game. Just to make make that clear, we will not be at the game. You and I will not be. at we the We will game, not no. be covering the game. We will be no. watching from home. We will yeah. not pretend that we're covering the game from home. Right. You know now. Yeah. That we're not going to the game. We're I will not do giving a you the impression. Show, and it will not be from a press box. It will be from right where we're sitting so here. I want to make sure people know that we're not giving the impression that we're going on the ro- that we're Was on the road. Concerned about that. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Okay. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Thanks to our friends at the Mississippi Beef Council. Two Brothers Smoked Meats in the heart of the Cotton District is the place to find the smoked southern soul food that you are looking for, and you certainly are looking for it. When you are in Starkville, a trip to Two Brothers is a must, as is a trip to our favorite new restaurant in Starkville, The Older Brother. Both places right within a stone's throw of each other. So whatever you're in the mood for, if you're in the mood for a st- uh, so- southern s- smoked southern soul food, took me a second there, mm-hmm. or... In the mood for a fancy sandwich, it's right there at Two Brothers and at the Older Brother. Great people in there, great locations, great ambiance. But, of course, it's all about the food, and the food is great at Two Brothers and the Older Brother. Gives great pro- a fandwich. Huh? A fandwich. A fandwich. No. That doesn't work for me. Fanswich? No. Fancy sandwich. Fanswish? Fans- no. 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 <laughs> Fan- fandwich doesn't do it for you. No, it doesn't work. Okay. No. Great products, great service. Every business likes to promise it to you. They deliver it to you at Advantage Business Systems. They've been doing it now for 49, 50 years. 50. 50. 50. When you need uh, any kind of technology for your business, you give Advantage Business Systems a call. And then if you need service, you just call that same number and you talk to the same people. And they take care of it for you. You don't have to worry about it. It's not a, a week to 10 day process of getting everybody on, on the same page and getting it fixed. It's, it's simple. It's easy. That's how Advantage Business Systems makes it work. Give them a call today, 601-362-9192, or you can visit them online at absms.com. Find out how Advantage Business Systems will help your business do business. Coffin season for it's, it's getting there, and I, I was feeling better today. I'm going to have to go grab I got my cough drops in the uh, car. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, before you're at the games this fall, make sure you're at Maroon & Co. first. If you're in Starkville and you need Mississippi State gear, the place to go is Maroon & Company. A selection like you cannot find anywhere else. Great Great items that aren't available to you at any other Mississippi State uh, memorabilia or, or, or merchandise store. You need to check them out. Check them out online at maroonandco.com. Check out the store here in Starkville and use our promo code THUNDER15 to save 15% off all regular price items. Some exclusions do apply. Before you're at the game, you need to go to Maroon and Co. All right, a short slate of games for us this week, uh, Robbie Falk. Uh, as you know, I am one game ahead, so let's see if Robbie can get that back. Uh, 
Only one non-conference game will both take LSU to beat South Alabama, I would assume. Yeah. Thank God that's a night game. I would hate for people to complain and whine and moan about it being during the day. Your friends. That's your friend, too. You like Matt. Matt's, Matt's, a, Matt's a great guy, but he's, have a he's, problem, just, he's just way off on this. Him and Richard got into a little tiff. Well, they'll get over it. I enjoyed that. I did. I, I do enjoy that. Richard, I, Richard's just they got into a, a tiff a couple slap of years. Around a little bit. Well, they got into a tiff a couple of years ago when LSU beat them. And oh yeah, yeah. Because because Matt he went on Matt's show and Matt was like, "Oh no, we're going to kill y'all." This was when LSU or Ole Miss was like fifth in the country. They were undefeated. Oh, the the, the, the year they went Rouge, to Baton Rouge, yeah. And and he was just like, it went down by like seventeen or it was it was, 17, it was like twenty four twenty one nothing Ole Miss, and then LSU just start could not be stopped. Yeah. And I remember texting Matt after the game. I was like, I guess when you're right, you're right. And he was just like, eh. So Richard got upset about yeah, that? Well, no, Richard was just upset that he was so confident going into the game. Oh. And Matt had every reason to be. But then Matt, but now Richard's That's right. State that, was playing at Bama. And yes. I was like, State is going to get killed in this game, and yeah. Ole Miss is going to beat LSU. It's going to be a bad And it didn't game. happen. So, But then Richard's right in this one, that LSU whining that they had to play one afternoon game when the whole conference plays afternoon games. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. All right, 11 a.m., Kentucky at Ole Miss. Rebels are a 17-and-a-half-point favorite. I don't know what to make of Kentucky. They played Georgia really, really tough, but they got slapped around by South Carolina. They've won their two non-conference games very convincingly. I, I, I will say this. I don't think Kentucky's going to be intimidated by Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. They'll, 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 they'll play hard, but at the end of the day, Ole Miss is just much better. I'll take the Rebels. I just don't think Kentucky's going to have the dudes on offense. Yeah, they just don't. I, agree um, with that. I think they can get some stops on the defensive side, All but... Right. Nah, I just I don't see him winning this game. I think Ole Miss wins by three touchdowns, probably twenty four. Yeah, something like that. Next three games, Robbie. These we might have some disagreements here. These yeah, are interesting games. Oklahoma at Auburn. Oklahoma's a two and a half point favorite. Two thirty kickoff on ABC. Uh, both of these teams coming off of, of bad losses. Oklahoma looked non competitive against Tennessee. Yeah. Auburn couldn't do anything. I feel like the wheels are coming off the Hugh Freeze bus a little bit there, which I love to see. All right, so I'm winning, so I'll pick this one then first, then you'll okay. pick the next game first, and then I'll pick the last game first. Okay. All right, that way you have a little bit of an advantage. I'm going to take Oklahoma to win this game. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go with that, too. Okay. I think Oklahoma is the more complete team, even though I don't think they're a great team. Yeah. I think they're a more complete team than Auburn right now. I think I agree Auburn. With that. I think Auburn has too many issues right now on that offensive side of the ball, which is just strange. Their defense looks solid. The offensive side just kind of it feels like a disaster waiting to happen. And anytime you have a quarterback controversy like this, and you're coming off a loss, I, I can't be too confident in them. So Oklahoma just lost to a better team the other day. Uh, that was much more – it just looked like they had their crap together more mm-hmm. than Oklahoma did. But I think Oklahoma can win this game. I agree. Yeah, as I said, I'll take Oklahoma to win. Arkansas at – or sorry, Arkansas versus Texas A&M at AT&T Stadium. I think this is the last year of that, although I feel like I've said that three years in a row. Um, A&M is a three-and-a-half point favorite. A&M struggled – with Bowling Green last week, whereas Arkansas goes on the road and gets the uh, the win over Auburn on the road, I don't know what to make of this A and M team. I just don't know. And, and Arkansas, I feel like they have a little bit more of an identity than does Texas A and M. I am going to embrace the Hog for the second weekend in a row. I'm going to take Arkansas to win this. They got they got a little uh, they got a little juice. swag, yeah, a little juice. <sighs> All right, so. You know, I don't know what you're going to do in the Bama Georgia game, so it would be a, it'd be a little bit of a stretch for me to pick against you right here. Mm. I could get into a bit of a hole. Good, but you could tie it up if A&M wins. I could. Um, Arkansas is coming off a, a very emotional win. Yep. They went on the road to Auburn, beating them. They played really well. Texas A&M is coming off of a. Poor performance against Bowling Green. Yeah, I think it's going to flip. I think A and M is going to play much better football this week. Mm-hmm. I think Arkansas is going to have a letdown. A little game. bit of a letdown. Okay, so I'm going to go with A and M. All right, so there, there's one. We got, we, right, got a, one. we got a little differential there. 
Game of the night and one of the games of the year. 6.30 kickoff on ABC. Number two, Georgia, at number four, Alabama. Uh, These games have been great over the last decade as these two teams have battled atop the SEC. Um, Real chance for Kalen DeBoer to make a huge statement that Alabama's going nowhere. Real chance for Georgia to make a statement to say, we are definitively the best team in this conference. Uh, huge game. Should be a lot of fun. Should be an uh, incredible atmosphere. Georgia is a slight favorite. One and a half. What do you got? I'm going Georgia. Mm. I think that they're, they have, uh, both teams have, um, you know, established quarterbacks at this point. But Alabama still, you know, there's been a couple of uh, moments in the South Florida game. Yeah. I think Georgia, even though they, they struggled on the road at Kentucky, They've done that, you know, in a game or two the last few seasons and and survived. Mm-hmm. I think that people are still, even though they're number two in the country, I think people are just are still maybe underestimating just how good this team can be. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Georgia. I think they're. I think Kirby Smart's going to win that first battle with Kalen DeBoer. Mm-hmm. I have been saying that for for months, and I'll stick with it. I will also go with Georgia. I think even though Georgia has dropped to number two, I think they're the best team in college football, uh, and they will win this game and go back to number one uh, this weekend. So Arkansas versus Texas A&M, that's the game for us to watch. Uh, If I win, I'll be two games up. Uh, A loss would even the series, and we'll have to be right back at square one. Tomorrow's the rumblings. Let's go ahead and let you know the first one of you that asks, why do we suck so bad? That's just going to have to do for all of you. So we will not answer that question 25 times. So... Try to be original in your I'm not, thoughts. I'm not discouraging people from talking Mississippi State football, but yeah. I'll have a much better time if we can talk about I'm just saying that you know, there's only so many ways we can answer that first question. Right. So, no, you know, is. just be original with your questions and, and think think like that. Talk to you guys tomorrow. For Robbie Falk, I'm Brian Adad. Thanks for listening to Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk in Mississippi. So, you think you're untouchable? Word life. This is basic thugonomics. This is ba- basic thugonomics. Word life. I'm untouchable, but I'm forcing you to feel me. Word life. This is basic, basic thugger, thugger, thuggernomics. Word life. A Super Talk Mississippi media production.